Hey everybody, so welcome to the last episode of this summer's Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase. And today we are joined by a very special guest and that is Semantic Web Company's Pool Party. And this is something that I have a lot of experience with in my past. I often recommend this to folks that are getting, you know, finally serious about their taxonomies and their ontology projects. And honestly, these folks are really great to work with from helping you figure out what solution is best for you, the whole way to actually helping you sometimes with that modeling problem that just can't get it right and you just need some extra help. And like all the other honest reviews, there will be a summary at the end, timestamp up above. All right, so let's go get started out. All right, so Heather, um, for those that don't know who you are, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Thanks, Ashley. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ashley and I have known each other quite a number of years through uh, taxonomy conferences and right. other related conferences. I've been doing uh, taxonomy work like for 25 years and uh, in different jobs. And yeah, I wrote this book here, The Accidental Taxonomist. <laughs> And she does a lot of workshops also. Yeah, yeah. So Hemel, why don't you introduce depends yourself? On, 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 depends on how you see it. <laughs> yeah, thanks Thanks for the invite and happy to be here. So I, I Helmut, I'm, I'm Chief Operating Officer and leading also our professional services team here at uh, Semantic Web Company. So the team that works with our clients with Pool Party, we are cr glad to have Heather in. We, we, we tried to write down our experience over the last 10 plus years uh, around knowledge graphs in the Knowledge Graph Cookbook. Uh, and it's available as a PDF on our site, but also uh, um, if you want to have it on uh, an e-reader, you can go to Amazon and there you find it too. All right, so I will have both of those books as links down below if you wanna go and check them out. All yeah. right, so let's get this party no pun intended, uh, started. I was waiting for that one. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about Pool Party. I mean, I, I've I've got a lot of experience with folks that I know that are using it. I, I know Andreas um, on LinkedIn is always talking about something on the knowledge graph space, but what is it? What are some of the main use cases for using it? I think the, the I, I would say the main thing that people are looking for when they approach us is uh, to bring together, uh, there we are with the party, the data and the different data pools, link uh, structured data in structured databases and unstructured data in the documents. Mm -hmm. and make better use of that to, to, to make better decisions, to be better satisfaction of the customers when they uh, uh, tr consume the services they provide or the information they provide and also to support uh, knowledge discovery. We just wanted to give a brief overview at the beginning what Pool Party is as a platform because it's mm -hmm. a middleware. So if I, if yeah. I could summarize, I think it's, a, it's an important piece where you're almost a one-stop shop. Right. So if you need the initial modeling um, applications, you, you have that. Then you've got taxonomy and ontology management. Mm -hmm. And then you have a suite of tools that takes that and makes it actionable. One for like auto indexing and classification yeah. kinds of activity, as well as um, creating knowledge applications, whether you put it on the back end or the front end of your analytics. So I think mm -hmm. that if this is something that um, the the audience that's that's watching is looking for that one stop shop, um, Pool Party is a really good option for that. And I think that you don't necessarily have to to take all of those things, right? It's not that's why it's a platform. You can say I only need yeah. this part or I only need that part. But if you exactly. don't want yeah, if you don't want to deal with building out an entire architecture and figuring out all the different vendors and all the different components, you can, you can just mine it out to these guys. <laughs> yeah, the conceptual and linguistic model layer, those blue circles, that rep represents the taxonomy ontology, and then the where it says data graph. That's that's where we've extracted the data out of the you know repositories, maybe transformed it into mm -hmm. um, RDF. So those actually are triples. The symbols are those are little triples. So it's a triple mm -hmm. store. What triple database are you using? As an embedded store, RD4J or Graph, uh, GraphDB in the meantime, which is the recommended uh, 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 database for now. Mm -hmm. Graph is quite well known. Our friends from Ontotext do a great job. But in the end, we can connect basically to any 
uh, enterprise ready mm. graph database. That's a fabulous overview because you have a preferred partner that um, is, is really well known and, and good and, and strong in this space. But it doesn't exclude you, right? If that's not what you're using, mm -hmm. um, which I think is really important in this space because triple source versus property graph, it's always like people head to head, but really they have different uses, right? So you can actually be using both in your application. Yeah. So I think it's really important what you said that just because it's a triple store doesn't mean it can't also work with, you know, Neo4j or Tiger Graph or, you know, any of those as well. This um, HR recommender free for anyone to access on our pool party website. Great. Uh, which uh, really showcases different components of, of pool party coming together. Um, and it, the way it works is, you know, you, you assume the role of a persona here, Beverly Neal, and what's being recommended are people, other employees to connect with over here, and then uh, projects, these orange circles to engage in, and uh, other op job openings within the organization. The strengths here, and actually, um, you can, if you were, you know, in her role, you would be able to edit it. The, the strengths, these tags actually come from the taxonomy and they're connected together with an ontology. And you could even kind of edit, add and delete them. And then when I click add tags automatically. That's what actually where the extractor is going nice. in looking at this and, and adding in. I mean, you see gray, we're already the ones selected. Mm -hmm but then I can then add them back. And, <laughs> and what's the number associated with oh, it? Is that a, a confidence? A, yeah, that's a, a ranking score. Nice. And when I, I show the um, the corpus management in action, you, you also see where the scores come from, um, relevancy and frequency and so forth. So, so if we could just pause one for, for one moment here on this, is like why is an HR recommendator, recommendation engine um, important? IBM had built something like this before graph was really even like you know a, a word people used and they were using this people graph to okay. spin up new projects um and get staff from that they already had that had those skill sets they just didn't know that they had those right skill sets. Yeah. yeah so if i were yeah. beverly neal I, I i don't know um what's up you know who to connect with or what to look out for because i'm not searching on something particular to having this front end is is very nice so here i'm looking you, know, you can look for employees projects or open positions not just the top five these uh strengths are the ones that are mine as beverly neal and what and who matches to them based on their strengths now here it's only showing showing the ones that are they not necessarily exact matches. They can be mm -hmm. related too, based mm -hmm. on the relationship and the taxonomy. You know, you and see, that's important too, right? That's yeah. why that taxonomy and the ontology that connects things is yeah. is so powerful versus just plain tags by themselves. Right, because he's got a longer list of strengths, and some of them didn't show up in the list because they weren't relevant to me. Mm -hmm. The ones in black are exact matches, and other ones are are um, similar. You know, suggested based on other reasons. Now this is ranked in order of mm -hmm. relevancy, but this, there's this other feature here where I can then adjust the weights based on what I want because nice. I have these skills, but I might decide that, well, when it comes to meeting employees, I'm particularly interested in people who are, you know, strong in computer science. I slide that over and then you see what switches around. Nice. Yeah. Enrico Ramos has computer science on in his uh, profile so he moved up for example mm -hmm. so, and to be clear this the so the the back end and all the data is something that uh, pool parties and and the entire suite is helping to facilitate but the ui itself is still something that the end customer would have to yeah. develop right okay yeah yeah we can give them guidance on that in fact this is shows how it was developed so you're going through the 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 information it's already in let's just say it's already in pool party everything is set up you have an api so somebody is creating those uh those queries the sparkle queries that would then be passed from the ui back so that that you know semantic search essentially yeah. would would be happening you you don't have to do sparkle queries no, because I, all that this uh, api and the api calls in a graph search oh yeah. that's nice that's yeah. that's really nice this isn't the exact same taxonomy that was used in the HR recommender because I, I just don't want to mess with that when I make little changes and stuff. And it's kind of big. It was it, they used the skills from ESCO, the European Skills Competencies. But you know, we have we have hierarchy, and I mean, you can search uh, 
pro, you know, has this type of head, and um, I think I want to just look at programming. Um, so when I sele select the concept here, this all you follows the SCOS, and you can have uh, one preferred label per language. So I added one here in German as well. Alternative labels, I, I was just going to add something in here anyway right now. Uh, coding is a uh, hidden labels here. I just misspelled it. <laughs> Scope no definitions. In fact, um, you can I can delete it. I can swap it out too if I decided, oh, I wanted oh, to have cool. it called coding. Now it's called coding. <laughs> Uh, no, I like program better. I'll switch it back again. You can have uh, a concept, can have more than one broader concept. It's called a polyhierarchy. And I think JavaScript mm -hmm. belongs here too. So if I if I went back um, to to programming, so I select the, it, you, you can do it different ways. I can just add it, but I could also just draw, drag and drop. Yeah, it. and that's good yeah. functionality to highlight yeah. mostly because if you do have a very large vocabulary, dragging something from the very top of that vocabulary oh, no, yeah, I know. down, that's, it's helpful kind of, to have. Yeah. I think that's kind of uh, for people who are new to taxonomies or something, or if you have a very small one, it, it's sometimes fun. But yeah, yeah, yeah. usually, usually yes. search, searching and adding. It has an X here because I can, I can, I can. That would be removing a relationship, and it's mm -hmm. still there. Okay, ontologies, which are over here, uh, you have different. I mean, we have preloaded with some generic ones, but we then you know created a bunch here, and the ontologies have classes, relations, and attributes. I mean, if you're familiar with the OWL ontology model, relations and attributes are called properties. The jobs one, you know, so I had, I, I made the classes just match the, the top mm -hmm. um, concept schemes, but you can have subclasses and it will show a hierarchy here. I could go show another one. It would, it, you would see that there, that there could be hierarchy with, within, you know, then, then this is, these are subclasses. Uh, and if you select one, it gives us a um, little bit of a graphic of showing oh, what nice. is the domain and range of. It would show subclass too, but I don't have any that. So uh, is there a way when you're in that ontology um, area to connect something from your taxonomy to that class? Or does yes, that happen yes, in the that's, taxonomy? Oh, and that, that's the actual point of it. Um, okay. So we have these here and we have relations and you can see that they're set up between a domain and a range. And you want, what you do is I, I've applied this jobs ontology. Actually, by me, we have an intermediate step. What we would do would be um, select a custom scheme. And then each of these, then it has a class assigned to it. So the employer, this is the employer class. If I've gone, if I've gone through, you see, I can, um, it would say remove class, but <laughs> I've added it. So I've, I've added the, I've assigned the classes to uh, concept schemes, but I could assign them to top concepts or even any concepts, and it's, it's inherited down within the tree. Mm -hmm. For example, if employer is here, and I just select this first one, um, you know, it there's not much here. Well, it doesn't have any broader or narrower, and uh, I could have given an alternative label. But if I go to the job scheme, now you can see the attributes that have been added and the custom relationships. It has its headquarters, has its offices, hires, and in fact, I was going to add another one here. You can just type ahead too, because I had I had software um, engineer, but let's say we also want software architect. Is it also is hiring in that that position? So I. I've added that one there. Yeah. Because I think that's really important. This is also why we separate a bit the ontology, because the ontology gives us the model. It says what relations are there, what attributes are there. Mm -hmm. and, and when you go back, you will find also cost there, because cost oh, yeah. also in the ontologies basically has a model. It has classes, mm -hmm. concepts. It's a very simple one, yeah, mm -hmm. but still. Uh, this is this is what it is, right? This is the yep. ontology that describes us, and then in the taxonomy we create based on that instances, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can extend uh, that, and that's one of the good things about also that format mm -hmm. of RDF and all. It's extendable. We can just say this is not only a class; this is also an employer, or this mm -hmm. is also because a thing can have multiple labels on it, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and then we can add additional information based on our ontology. And here we use on one hand the taxonomy that's cost ontology, that's the first tab. Yeah? And mm -hmm. then in the second tab, we have our own created jobs ontology, job scheme to extend mm -hmm. the information that we yeah. want to have for the concept. And that's one way where we use the ontology, but we use the ontology also to say what facets do we have in a search, what should be shown mm -hmm. for a search result, uh, 
but also what uh, as a rules engine for the extraction. You know, you're highlighting the importance of the standards, right? These are W3C yeah. standards. So I know you don't have to click on it and show it to us, um, but this also helps with linked data, right? So yeah. the reuse of data. Yeah. Now here, I, so yeah. I, you prompted me to do the look, show the project linking feature. Um, so I have a, a small, very small set, so this is four of 141 samples CVs that I, I uploaded, and then you can get um, extracted concepts that match uh, the, the already concepts. What's particularly interesting is then extracting terms. So terms are not yet concepts in the taxonomy, but they mm -hmm. can be considered. Uh, you know, some of these are good, some are not. Some of them I don't even know what. Well, if you don't know what they are, you can click on it, and then you it will show you where it's extracted from. Mm -hmm. the sentence. So Eric here, and I see thesaurus of Eric, Eric thesaurus. Oh, yeah. So that's that's what Eric is. You know, it, mm -hmm. it gives you that context. Uh, we do see the numbers here. I said, so this is, you know, the relevancy and you can sort. And then mutual information score has to do with um, if it's, uh, you know, co-occurring two or three words together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, you, you can adjust that and, and consider and 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 um, whether you want to add it, but it's also useful to look in, sometimes at the individual documents and where mm -hmm. uh, concepts have occurred in. Um, so if here, if I select one of these uh, CVs here, it will actually have highlighted, now which are the concepts that are already mm -hmm. in the taxonomy. Nice. Uh, but if here, yeah, I added then UML. If I select the candidate one, it will even give me suggestions of you know, yeah, technology and innovation. I think, you know, technology it should be a broader concept of, of technology, you know, then I can integrate it into the taxonomy. A lot of senior stakeholders, for instance, don't understand NLP. I have used a very uh, similar uh, tool, like you were just showing, where it kind of highlights the, the NLP um, mm -hmm. in a document to show them what the machine learning does. It's explainable AI. Yeah, and I think uh, corpus management is really a central piece because it connects the extraction and the taxonomy management. Because on one hand, of course, it helps you to continuously improve the taxonomy based on your documents. But on the other hand, it's like a statistic model of your documents. And mm -hmm. by that, it can improve mm -hmm. extraction, but providing better ranking, even extracting things that are not found in the document, but we uh, think it's relevant for the document because it occurs often in the same context. And, and, and the main thing about the extractor, it's an API where you can send a text. Uh, it can be a file, basically any format is supported. It can be a URL where we fetch the text from, and then we send it to our extractor API and try to get meaning out of it. And mm -hmm. when, when Heather did uh, getting that uh, automatically, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it is exactly what happens. The text is sent to the API and we get back in that case only the concepts that are found. Mm -hmm. And but, with that uh, machine learning, end, mm -hmm. yeah, one thing I want to just ask on that machine learning aspect is this, this all looks out of the box like it's magic. We all know it's not magic. So is there um, a piece where uh, an end user or an end customer for you would have to help train the model on their taxonomy, or is that something that you all handle for the customer? Here, the training is simple. It's the taxonomy, and you improve it with the corpus, and then you can be get better scoring. This is now a demo. So this is uh, it uses Mesh, I think, in the background, mm -hmm. but there are also some named entity recognition models that have been trained. So trained mm -hmm. models for entity recognition, mm -hmm. uh, for you see diseases, for persons, for locations. Uh, and uh, now I do the extraction here and you will see I get different results. Uh, I get on one hand the named entities. So mm -hmm. that are the diseases that have been found by mach my machine learning trained model to identify mm -hmm. diseases. I still get the concepts from the mesh thesaurus, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is just the taxonomy that's used here. I get just terms mm -hmm. that seem to mm -hmm. be important for the text, are not in the taxonomy yet. And we also did uh, create a, a document classifier, a trained classifier that tells me that this document looks rather like a medical journal abstract. Then mm. uh, and uh, for the document classification, there's really an, an, an interface where I just upload documents, 
you specify your rules that you want mm -hmm. to have, like what classes you want, uh, what what classes you want to classify in, what is the algorithm that you want to use, deep learning, whatever. If you also want to use the taxonomy again to improve the classification results, and mm -hmm. then you can just train it and then and play around okay. until you get the classifier that has the F score or the the, the relevancy mm -hmm. that you want. Uh, and then uh, basically you simply then in the extract call say, oh no, I don't only want to get concepts from my taxonomy. I also want to use that document classifier. I want to use that NER trained model that I have and mm -hmm. some of the other features. So you can combine different features in one call and get uh, by that uh, just a lot of information mm -hmm. from your documents. Largely, you have some pre-trained models because you're experts in the field, you really understand this space, but you also allow the flexibility to your customers if they're seeing something that keeps getting maybe misclassified or maybe the machine isn't picking up on it correctly, they can go in and modify with their own additional training sets or rules or something else if they needed to. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Right. Yes. Thank you. And uh, this is also an HR search now. So mm -hmm. it combines uh, CVs that have been indexed with a taxonomy, structured data from a database where we have salary mm -hmm. ranges and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see then uh, context information besides uh, salary, also what other technology domains uh, he's in, what's, what's the age and so on. And I get suggested similar ones that mm -hmm. are, are close profile. So, and that's just uh, basically the same API that it's built mm -hmm. on top. It's just built down and then we look uh, at, at, at one result and uh, also see the context and see similar results. If you don't mind, if you can send those links to me, we will put those down below in the description. So if um, folks want to go in and play around with this and just really yeah. see what does this powerful suite of tools behind the scenes, what can it actually produce, I think would be really, really fun. All right, so that was a fabulous walkthrough of what I think is a fabulous tool. I know a lot of people using this tool, so very highly reputable. And I've also worked with Pool Party and Semantic Web Company in my past, and they are wonderful people, uh, very friendly. They will help you with lots of things. Um, so I can at least recommend them as wonderful people as well. And more links down below.